Welcome to module 1.8, where we'll be discussing capacitance. I'm Hao Chen, I'm a junior at Berkeley, and I'm an EECS major. My name is Henry, I'm a fourth year studying energy engineering at UC Berkeley. Uh, in this video, we'll be discussing uh, the basics of capacitors and the physics that allows them to function. We'll also point out the differences between a capacitor and a battery. Next, we'll cover the charging and discharging behavior of capacitors, as well as what time constant has to do with that. Finally, we'll talk about real-world applications regarding these devices. To start off, capacitors store energy in the form of electric charges. The capacity of a capacitor is measured in farads. These devices differ from batteries, as they cannot store as much energy as a battery, but can output significantly higher amount of energy in short bursts. This allows them to be used for preventing large changes in voltage, as well as converting from AC current to DC current. Here are some of the formulas to keep in mind when you're working with capacitors. The first formula is C equals epsilon A over D, where epsilon is the dielectric permittivity, C is the capacitance of the capacitor, Q is the charge of each plate, and D is the distance or the gap between the capacitor plates. This formula represents the relationship between the capacitance of a capacitor and the area of a plate of the capacitor. And it can be used to determine design requirements for a given capacitor. For example, if you want your capacitor to have a certain capacitance, you can figure out what the area of the two plates should be or the distance between the two plates. The second formula we have is Q equals CV, where Q is the amount of charge on the plate of the capacitor, C is the capacitance of the capacitor, and V is the voltage across the capacitor. Now this formula represents the relationship between the amount of charge on the plate of the capacitor and the magnitude of the voltage across the capacitor. And I know that was really confusing, but there's a picture on the bottom where you can see that the blue is the area of the parallel plates. And on the right, there's the distance between the two plates. In the middle, there's like a, there should be a gap of a dielectric and that dielectric uh, will have a certain primitivity depending on the material. So now we're going to do an example calculation. So let's just get an overview of the two different problems that we'll be looking at today, adapted from Giancoli's physics for scientists and engineers. The first question is to make a 50 microfarad parallel plate capacitor, what area must the plates have if they are to be separated by three millimeters? Assume the gap is a vacuum. The second question is, an electric field of five by 10 to the five volts per meter is desired between two parallel plates, each of area 20 centimeters squared, separated by 0.250 centimeters. What charge must be on each plate? And again, we're gonna assume that the gap is a vacuum. So we'll give you all a couple minutes to try it out for yourself using the formulas from before, and then we'll work together through that problem. So now that you've had some time to try out the problem yourself, you're gonna go through the solutions. So the question is, to make a 50 microfarad capacitor, what area must the plates have to be separate, or what area must the plates be if they're to be separated by three millimeters? So first let's note what things that we know. So first we know that we have a 50 microfarad capacitor. So that means uh, we have 50 microfarads of capacitance. And we know that the gap is a vacuum. So because the gap is a vacuum, we know that the dielectric constant or the permittivity is going to be 8.86 times 10 to the negative 12, 12 farads per meter. 
and we want to find the area of the plates or what area the plates have to be to make this to meet this requirement or design requirement so uh, we know that C is equal to epsilon A over D and again C is the capacitance of the capacitor epsilon is the dielectric constant a is the area of the plates which is what we're trying to find and d is the gap between the two plates so first let's isolate what we want to find so we want to find the area right so to do that let's just do some algebra and say that a oops a is equal to c d over epsilon and so now we have a formula that will help us find it so now the rest is just plugging in the numbers so let's plug in our numbers so the capacitance is going to be 50 microfarads so let's write this in scientific notation so we have 50 uh, microfarad so micro is 10 to the negative 6 and if you don't know that you can also look that up 10 to the negative 6 it's a good thing to know though so we have 50 microfarads we know the, the distance between the two plates are going to be 3 millimeters so 3 millimeters is 3 times 10 to negative 3 and this is all divided by the um, dielectric constant. So that's going to be 8.86 times 10 to negative 12. Okay, so then once you do that, you'll plug that into your calculator. And these are our answers. So let me just make this more clear, delete some of the clutter. And the answers will be on the slide, just so know in a more clearer format so these are our answers and then we'll just have to plug that into our calculator and determine the answer so moving on to question number two we have the problem here again an electric field of 5 times 10 to the 5 volts per meter is desired between two parallel plates each of area 20 centimeters squared and separated by 0.250 centimeters. What charge must be on each plate? Now we're gonna assume that the gap is a vacuum. So let's think about what we want to do, right? We know our knowns, we know the electric field, which is five times 10 to the five volts per meter. We know the area of each of the parallel plates. It's like the area of my hand, it's like 20 centimeters squared. Right, and then they're separated by 0.250 centimeters. And we have a formula that will basically help us determine the capacitance of our capacitor. And we used it in number one. So that formula is, I'll write it in the top. So we have C is equal to epsilon A over D. And so let's, let's figure out what the capacitance of our capacitor is, and then we'll use that to figure out what the charges on each of the plates will be. So let's do this. So we know that C is equal to epsilon A, and we know that, what is epsilon? Epsilon is going to be the dielectric constant, so that's going to be, and we're assuming that the gap is a vacuum. So we know that is a given, which is 8.86 times 10 to the negative 12 farads per meter. Okay, so that's epsilon. So we know that capacitance is equal to epsilon times A, and epsilon is the dielectric permittivity for a vacuum. A is the area of the plate, and we'll write that in scientific notation. So that is going to be 20 centimeters 
So that's 20 times 10 to the negative 2 meters squared. That's the area. And then the distance between them, the two plates, distance between the two plates is 0.250 centimeters. So that's 0.250 times 10 to the uh, negative 2 meters. All right, make this more clear. So then if you plug that into your calculator, you should get the capacitance of our capacitor, which is going to be 7.08 times 10 to negative 10. That's what you should get. That's our capacitance. OK, so that's our answer for the capacitance. But we need to use this capacitance to figure out what the charges in our plates will be. So I'm going to make more space. So make sure you remember this, because we'll be needing that. So I'm going to clear my screen now. And then we know that the capacitance that we have for problem two is going to be 7.08 times 10 to the negative 10 farads. OK? So now we're going to use uh, the second formula that we learned to figure out the charges accumulated on the, on the parallel plates. So we know that, and I'll write this in blue. Sorry, I'll write this in red since the top is blue. Writing it on top here, Q is equal to CV, right? And so we know C, we figured that out from our subproblem. And we know the voltage, right? We were given the electric field based on the, uh, you know, per meter. So we'll need to change that into uh, the correct form. So we have 5 times 10 to the 5 volts per meter. So in order to convert the electric field into something that we can use to plug into Q equals CV, we want to multiply this electric field that we're given by the uh, distance that we'll be needing it for. So the distance between the two plates are 0.250 centimeters. So let's multiply our electric field by the distance separated. So that's going to be 0.250 times 10 to the negative 2. OK, that's a little bit off the page, but hopefully we'll be able to see that. So now that is basically going to be our voltage, right? So now we can plug everything into Q equals CV. Because we know our voltage here. I'll put this in green. So we know our voltage here. And we know our capacitance here, right? So that means we can find what Q is. So if you plug this all in, so we'll just write this out here. Q equals CV. I'm running out of space. So uh, once you plug this into your calculator, you're basically multiplying this. I'll highlight this. You're basically multiplying this and this together, right? Because that's Q equals C and V. So then our charge is going, you should, you should get a value of 8.8. 5 times 10 to the negative 7 coulombs. Here we have the example calculations in case that the demonstration wasn't as clear as you wanted. So here are the answers. Um, and please note that in these solutions, we have dielectric constant as air. That should be vacuum. So apologies for that. Next, we're going to cover how capacitors charge and discharge. Here's a simple scenario of our capacitor charger. In this circuit, when the uh, switch in the top left is flipped on, current flows through the resistor and through the capacitor from the voltage source. Initially, there is no potential difference between the two plates of the capacitor since there is no charge on either plate. However, as current flows through the capacitor, opposing charges build up on the two plates of the capacitor, which restricts the current flow and creates a potential difference between the two plates of the capacitor. Eventually, the charges will accumulate to the maximum capacity, and no more current flows through the capacitor. 
at this stage, the capacitor will have the same voltage potential as the voltage source. Now we'll cover the scenario where the capacitor starts at full charge and discharges to zero charge. It starts at full charge, and there exists a voltage potential between the two plates of the capacitor. So when the switch is turned on, current flows through the resistor, which dissipates the energy, until the voltage potential across the plates of the capacitor reaches zero. At this point, there is zero charge on the plates of the capacitor. The time it takes to charge and discharge a capacitor is proportional to the circuit's time constant, which varies depending on the layout of the circuit. In this case, the time constant is the resistance multiplied by the capacitance. Typically, it takes around five time constants to fully charge or discharge a capacitor. Here are some practical applications of capacitors. So now we know that capacitors have the basic function of storing charge, but they're widely used, even though they're a very basic function, they're widely used in our everyday lives. Think of the flash on your camera, or you can even think of your phone or your laptop charger. The flash on your camera uses capacitors to store charge, and that's powerful enough to emit light so that we can take pictures at night or when the lighting is not good. On the other hand, a laptop or phone charger must convert the high voltage in your outlet to low voltage in your device. An analogy I like to think of is this. When someone's driving, when someone's driving and they're trying to enter a freeway, there might be a bunch of cars waiting for the ramp metering light or the traffic light you must pass right before you enter the highway. Similar to how these traffic lights help to regulate the traffic on the highway during traffic hour, Capacitors help to smooth the current for the charge for the change between AC to DC current. 